Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, today, we are going to discuss via case based approach, a very important and a high yield topic for exams, familial lipid disorders. A uh, very challenging topic, and uh, I've tried to cover all the grounds here to help you all get all the important information in this case presentations. So today we are going to discuss about familial lipid disorders via case-based approach. Let's start with our first case. A 17-year-old boy has developed sudden onset of upper abdominal pain after a large meal. And on presentation to the hospital, he was found to have an elevated lipase level, suggestive pancreatitis, and triglyceride concentration of 3,500 milligram per deciliter. Okay, so that's very important here. 3,500 milligram per deciliter for the triglycerides. That will be around 39 millimole per liter. We know the maximum allowable range is uh, less than 150, which is uh, 1.7 millimole per liter. So clearly, this is uh, increased pretty, pretty, pretty high. Okay. Uh, now, abdominal CT scan confirm the finding of pancreatitis. So here we have a young boy who has presented with very high triglycerides and the uh, presenting symptom is of pancreatitis. He does not smoke cigarettes or consume alcohol beverages. His medical history is notable for markedly elevated triglycerides, which were detected when he was 10 years of age. That time, the levels were already up to 2,500 milligram per deciliter. That is around 28.2 millimole per liter. And uh, this was uh, secondary to uh, the high triglycerides that he was having these unexplained episodes of upper abdominal pain, which were also possible attacks of pancreatitis. Now, his family history is unremarkable for any cardiovascular disease. So no family history here of cardiovascular disease or pancreatitis. Both the parents are alive and well. And he has a 23-year-old sister who is also healthy. So clearly, we have a case here of uh, a very, very high triglycerides. The secondary causes are ruled out because he's not consuming any alcohols or not having any other medical history. And he also does not have any family history of cardiovascular disease or pancreatitis. So what's the next step forward? On examination of this patient, uh, this was the lesions which were seen on his thighs. Okay, And on systemic examination, he was found to have hepatospinomegaly. Now look at, let's look at his lab parameters. So his total cholesterol was also found to be very elevated at 494. Okay, we know the maximum range is up to 200 milligram per deciliter. LDL cholesterol was unable to calculate, obviously because of the very high triglycerides. We know that any triglyceride level of more than 400, uh, the formula to calculate LDL does not apply. And usually the only way then we can find out the LDL will be measured LDL. The non-HDL cholesterol also was found to be very high at 477 milligram per deciliter. The HbA1c was normal. The renal functions were okay. Thyroid was normal as well. And the fasting glucose was 83. Now in this history stem, the uh, normal TSH is again very important because we want to make sure that there is no secondary causes for the uh, raised triglycerides. Also, uh, fasting plasma glucose is very important to make sure that there is no diabetes as the underlying cause of the high triglycerides. So very important things to look for in the uh, lab parameters as well, apart from the, of course, the obvious very high triglycerides, which we saw in the first slide, and the total cholesterol, which is again very, very high and unable to calculate LDL cholesterol. Now, what's the diagnosis we should think of at this particular point? Now, we are looking at very high triglycerides, we are looking at pancreatitis, and we are looking at those skin lesions which we saw in the first slide, which we refer to as eruptive xanthomas. Now, there is three differential diagnoses in this particular case, which we should look at. Type 1, hyperlipoproteinemia, type 4, and type 5, okay? So, I'll discuss each and everything in detail in the coming slides and the cases. But this is to think about the differential diagnosis 
for this particular case. So this patient has got eruptive xanthomas and he's also got pancreatitis. Okay. And what about his triglycerides level? His triglycerides levels are more than 1000. Now, the main differentiating feature here between type 1 and type 4 is the triglycerides will never be more than 1000 in type 4. Okay. In type 1 and type 5, it is possible that their triglycerides can be more than 1000. Of course, both these types, the type 1 and the type 5, will also have very high total cholesterol, okay, like our patient. So very high total cholesterol, very high triglycerides, more than 1000. The two main things are type 1 and type 5, okay. Both of them can have eruptive xanthomas and both of them can have pancreatitis. Now, what about type 4, okay. So in type 4, the triglycerides levels will be usually 1000. And the very important factor is here is the cholesterol will be almost normal or only slightly increased. Okay. So the cholesterol will be normal or only slightly increased in type 4. All right. We'll discuss again all this in the coming slides. Okay. Now, uh, the main lipoprotein which is elevated in type 1 is chylomicrons. Okay. In type 4, it is the VLDL. And in type 5, type 5 is basically a combination of 1 plus 4. So we have chylomicrons plus VLDL, both of them which are elevated in type 5. Okay. So, so far from this slide, just remember these important points. The main thing which is important to think here in this particular patient, the triglycerides are much more than 1000. And along with that, he has got eruptive xanthomas and pancreatitis. So our top two differentials will be type 1 and type 5. In type 4, the triglycerides will be less than 1000. And the cholesterol will be almost normal, only slightly increased, not like this patient. So our top two differential diagnosis for this particular patient will be type 1 and type 5. Now, how do we differentiate them? Then on electrophoresis or ultracentrifugation, this patient was found to have raised chylomicrons. Okay. So as I mentioned, type 1 will have raised chylomicrons. And type 5, which is a combination of type 1 and type 4, will have chylomicrons plus VLDL. However, in this patient, we had only raised chylomicrons. So what's the diagnosis? It's clearly type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia, also referred to as familial hyperchylomicronemia. Okay. Now, in general, there is an li increased lifetime risk of recurrent pancreatitis, as was occurring in this patient. He was getting these attacks of pancreatitis right from he was 10 years of age. The risk increases when triglyceride concentration is more than 1,000. Like in this patient, it was almost 3,500. And is greatest when the triglyceride concentration is higher than 2,000 milligram per deciliter, like in this particular patient. So clearly, the diagnosis in this case is type 1, which is familial hyperchylomicronemia. Again, this was the clue uh, which we should search for in the uh, question stem if there is a raised chylomicrons. If there is a raised chylomicrons plus VLDL, then it will become type 5 because that will have similar triglycerides, very high, similar eruptive xanthomas and similar pancreatitis in terms of clinical presentation. So let's move on now to the treatment for familial, hypo, uh, familial chylomicronemia. So basically, uh, familial hyperchylomicronemia responds only to uh, dietary and lifestyle intervention. That is the only treatment available for that. And that primarily is dramatic restriction of the fat intake, okay? And we need to control the secondary factors if there are any secondary factors. In this particular patient, there was no secondary causes of the raised triglycerides. Pharmacological therapies in terms of this type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia, uh, like fibrates, are ineffective and not recommended. Okay, so this is very, very important. Now, I told you about the main differentials for this particular case. So we are going to uh, try to cover these three types in this particular slide. So type one. So the free view of this particular lecture has ended. Uh, for access to this full lecture session, please subscribe to my lecture series, which is total of 60 lectures till date. Uh, these uh, will be provided access to via paid subscription plan. And uh, all the paid subscribers will be given a lifetime access to all my existing 60 videos lectures, which are already on the YouTube channel plus all the upcoming new videos. So whatever lectures or sessions I'll be doing in coming weeks, months, and years, all of them will be uh, given access to in the same subscription plan.
So for the full subscription details, please email me on mazirules at gmail.com or WhatsApp me on 00971554374 and have the same number on the Telegram app as well. Uh, just to give a brief overview of the full lecture series, so it includes uh, different topics across diabetes and endocrinology. So diabetes itself is there are around 19 lectures which I've done across different topics which are useful for the exams as well as for the clinical endocrinology practice. In terms of uh, high yield topics for specialty exam and European board exam, there are around nine sessions which have covered all the previous exam recalls as well as all the high yield topics and themes which are frequently encountered in the uh, specialty exams and the European board exams. In terms of thyroid, apart from the thyroid cancer guidelines, which were recently uh, published, plus there are other sessions on different topics uh, related to thyroid uh, across the spectrum of thyroid disease. In terms of adrenal as well, covering all the important topics or sessions which are frequently encountered in exams and in clinical practice. There are two very good sessions on lab endocrinology by Dr. Well Murugan. Very helpful for those preparing for uh, DM endo or DNB endocrinology as well. In terms of pituitary, also have covered all the important sessions on all the important topics which are frequently encountered in clinical practice and the exams. There are a few sessions on the inherited endocrine syndromes as well. Very important sessions on reproductive endocrinology about uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, gynecomastia, hirsutism. Because diagnosis, evaluation, management. There is a sessions on calcium and bone metabolism, on familial lipid disorders, and uh, sessions on pediatric endocrinology as well. So just to let you know that there are many more sessions coming up. And as I mentioned, that in the same subscription plan or same subscription fee, you will be provided access to all my existing 60 lectures plus all my forthcoming lectures. So thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you very much for supporting.